Well, hello, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today, we're going to talk about how to motivate kids. Uh, I think back to my childhood, you know, um, I've mentioned it before, if you've seen any of my other videos, but I felt like I was a very disempowered teenager Um, all through my childhood. It just felt like uh, somebody was always trying to put me into a box, either it was my mom or my teachers or, you know, some adult in my life that was trying to get me to behave the way they wanted me to behave or trying to get me to be somebody who they thought I should be. And so as a teenager, I was very rebellious. I got into, you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll as everybody does eventually. Uh, But nobody would teach me about that. It was just always, no, don't touch it. No, don't drink. No, don't smoke. No, you're not allowed to have boys. And When I was 22 years old, I read a book called Think and Grow Rich, and halfway through that book, I just thought to myself, you know, if I knew now, if I knew what was in this book when I was a child, I would never have done all those stupid things. I never would have got kicked out of the house at 15 and slept underneath apartment stairwell. I never would have got pregnant and given my baby up for adoption. I did a lot of really stupid things that just made my parents so angry when I was a teenager and we chalk it up to teenage rebellion. But I want to point out that the term uh, terrible twos wasn't coined until the mid 50s and teenage rebellion, well that's very recent as well. We're talking about the 50s and the 60s when the teenagers started rebelling against Vietnam and whatnot. So we think it's normal. We just were born into that. We believe it, that teenagers are supposed to rebel. But I promise you that if I knew the power that I had, the potential that I had, how smart I was, I just never would have done that because really what I was searching for, I was searching for worthiness. You know, I just wanted to be loved unconditionally. I wanted to be accepted for who I was and I was searching for it in all the wrong places. And so sometimes when we look at our kids and they're being defiant or unmotivated, maybe they're looking for acceptance and love in all the wrong places and we don't understand because we're looking at them now from an adult perspective. We're looking at it from 20, 30, 40 years on this planet. We have the experience. We know all the bad things that can happen, but they do not know all the bad things that can happen because they only can know what they personally experience. So I got halfway reading, uh, halfway through reading Think and Grow Rich. I ran over to my dad's house and I said, Dad, I'm going to find a way to empower all the kids of the world because like I said, if I knew what I know now, I never would have done all those stupid things. And he kind of looked at me and went, that's nice, dear. Now I'm 22. I'd never finished anything. I didn't graduate from high school. I could see how he could look at me and go, "Uh aha, that's nice, dear. But it was real. It was like from another world. It was like God implanted a dream inside of my heart and it became my mission my mission to help everybody out there that I could find their worthiness, find their greatness, find their strength in this life. But who was going to listen to me at the age of 22, right? When I hadn't done anything yet in my life. It's like, oh yeah, I read this in a book and we can change things. And no, that's not how life works. And so I dove into personal development. I started digging into thinking road rich even more. And I started digging into things like science of getting rich. And I started in network marketing in my late 20s. So six years after I read Think and Grow Rich, I was beginning to learn about business, but hadn't really created a lot of success. I come from a very poverty uh, background, poverty mindset, a lot of worry and fear and doubt and basically self-limiting beliefs because every time I tried to get out of that box as a child, somebody told me I was doing something wrong and they would attempt to put me back in. And I know that's true. Um, that we all kind of rebel against that. And you probably know what I'm talking about if you ever felt controlled by your parents, right? And so I had no idea how to help all the kids. I had this big dream. Um, And so I was the worst network marketer in the history of network marketing when I first started. I couldn't sign people up. I didn't know how to sell. I didn't know how to lead teams. 
So two years after my network marketing experience, I started getting results. And one thing that I was taught by some really great leaders was that if you do too much for your team, try to help them too much, overcompensate for them, they'll never grow roots on their own. They'll never accomplish anything. And so even when I did start to learn how to get people to sign up, I did too much. I'd be like, just sign up my business. You don't have to do anything. I'll do everything. And I did. I worked really, really hard uh, for the next couple of years. But when I learned leadership, I understood that there's a universal principle that says, if you do too much for a human being, you smother their motivation and steal their desire. And they don't even know on a conscious level that it's actually happening. And so I learned to empower my team by encouraging them to struggle through some of the life cycles that you have to learn when you're trying to go from being a stay-at-home mom to being a business builder or whatever. And I just knew that at my business, but I didn't know it in my home. So in my business, I started to succeed to high levels, but the minute that I would go home, all hell would break loose and my kids were all over the place and they weren't personally developed at all. Um, I love research and I love studying and I love learning things. And so when I became pregnant with my first son 20 years ago or 21 years ago almost, I dove into parenting books and I learned all about backbone parenting and chore charts and rule charts and timeouts and takeaways and how important discipline was. Um, and, but to have a backbone sometimes, right? To try to be on their side and get on their level and be, you know, consciously explain to them why they are in trouble and things like that. Well, I did all that and nothing worked to get my kids to comply. And so I ended up like a mass amount of moms and dads out there today kind of beating your head against the wall, just going, gosh, like, what is the answer? And so the school started to call and my first son was diagnosed with ADHD in grade three. And I didn't really buy into that because I was like, we're all born perfect and we're conditioned to not believe in ourselves. And so I thought that I could work with him and talk to him and explain things and help him you know, not have ADHD, right? Uh, but then my next child came along and then there was a lot of sibling rivalry and she was just very defiant. You know, if, if she wanted something, she'd just grab it herself and sneak under to the table or outside and do whatever she wanted to do. And gosh, I tried everything. Like I literally would lock myself in the bathroom and just let them run all over the house. They had overtaken my house. And so I worked for 18 years. So I had the dream at 22 and 18 years later, I felt like I had worked my whole life to give my kids a good life. I wanted them to have the things I never had. I wanted them to have designer clothes. I wanted them to have the ability to eat whatever they wanted. I wanted them to know they were loved and cherished. I wanted them to feel worthy. I'm going to cry because there's like nothing worse in the world than feeling unworthy. And I, now that I know today that I'm worthy, I know the reason I felt unworthy was because of the control and being put into the box. And I literally unknowingly did the same thing to my kids. So I was coming home. I was doing too much for them. I was basically smothering their desires, stealing their motivation without knowing it and kept doing a mass amount of research. You know, I'd look up videos. I would read articles. How do you get your teenager to get out of bed and go to school if they're a foot taller than you and heavier than you? Um, so around 2011, so 18 years after I had the vision that I wanted to help kids, um, becoming very successful in business, living in a seven bedroom home with a platinum Lexus, speaking on front of the stage to hundreds and sometimes thousands of people at a time, empowering them. I was literally losing it at home. Um, there were no answers to find, but I ended up on a cruise ship in the Bahamas in 2011 and four hours before the cruise ship ended, a gentleman that I met in the very beginning said, Bonnie, I've been looking all over the place for you. There's someone you have to meet. Bonnie, Thomas, Thomas, Bonnie. And I met Tom and he seemed all 
confident and casual and having fun. And uh, he had a radio show. So I thought, oh my gosh, this is my opportunity to get the message out to the world. I can go on his radio show and talk about personal development and how worthy people are and try to encourage them. And anyways, after a few months of getting to know Thomas over the phone and through Skype and putting a few programs together, I invited him to Canada to my house to help me build workshops called Foundation for Life. This is for adults to, you know, help them believe in themselves more. And while he was at my house, I continued to see him engage with my children. I shared a story yesterday about him teaching Zachary how to make his own juice and how Zachary, like, that was the first time in his life he was actually empowered to get something and do something really on his own because I had done everything for him to that point. He was the youngest of four. Um... But I'd see things like we'd be driving in the car and when I would get home, the kids wouldn't leave the back seat because they were too busy cleaning. And I was like, (laughs) what did you just do to my kids? Because I swear I could be dying and say, hey, if you help me clean, I'll survive. And they would just ignore me and go back to their video games. Like, what did you do to my kids? He said one sentence to them um, that got them totally engaged in cleaning up the back of my truck. And they were six and nine at the time, my two youngest ones. So I saw that and I was like, well, where did you learn to talk to kids like this? Um, And he told me he had a martial arts school that he ran for 15 years. But like, what did that mean to me? And I was absolutely unimpressed. So I kind of blew off the first instance, blew off the second instance. But when Jacob was uh, at the end of grade seven, he was 12. He just refused to get up and go to school. And I tried everything. I tried uh, tickling. I tried taking the blanket. I tried calling his dad, grandma. I tried, you know, yelling at him. I took his blanket away. It didn't matter. He'd just get up and get a new blanket. There was nothing that I could do to this kid to get him to go, get up and go to school. And so I phoned Thomas and I'm like, uh, Jacob's refusing to go to school. How can I get him to go to school? And so Thomas says, um, does he have a cell phone? And I went, yeah, he has a cell phone. And so we made a plan for Jacob to continue to have a cell phone. And so I went down to the basement and I looked at my son and I said, you know what, son, um, releasing the control, thought I'd try a new way, see if it would work. And I said, you know what, son, I went to school because I did go back to high school and upgrade later. Um, I've got my education. I've got my career this is about you and this is about your education and your career and whether you want to go to school or not, right? It's got to come from the inside of you. But this is uh, the plan that I'm going to share with you. Uh, The first day that you say, or the first day that you decide not to go to school, you're saying, mom, you're, I'm choosing to give you my cell phone for the day. The second day that you choose to not go to school, you're saying, mom, I want you to phone the phone company and have my cell phone turned off for two weeks. And the third day that you choose to not go to school moving forward, you're saying, Mom, I choose to, for you to never pay for my cell phone again. So go or don't go. It's completely your choice. Fair enough? And he was just left there dumbfounded, thinking, scratching his head like it was something he'd never heard before. I mean, I have the choice to go or not go. And guess what he did? I have six live viewers. Did Jacob go to school or not go to school on his own after that conversation. What do you think? What do you think? Hi, Marta. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me live. This is so fun. I love this. I'd love an answer. What do you think um, with the cell phone plan? If somebody doesn't answer me sooner, if I can't see your answer, then I'm going to have to just tell you. (laughs) All right. That motivated him to go to school every single day from that day forward to graduating high school. Never, ever, ever had to talk to Jacob about going to school again once I handed the reins over to him. It was a huge epiphany. It was completely counterintuitive to anything that I'd ever heard before when it came to being a parent. And so, no. Um, so, uh, anyways, I started asking him more questions and he showed me these pamphlets and like this course that he had at his after school program. And, and I was like, I think you have like a parenting philosophy here. And he's like, oh yeah, well, we'll get to that later when we're done with our workshops and whatever. And I went six months later 
studying him, phoning him every day, sometimes several times a day, asking, my kids are doing this, now what do I do? My kids are doing this, now what do I do? And waiting for the answer. And that was the only tools that I had to learn the Creating Champions for Life program at the time. Um, and I literally was at a loss, right? Because I had this big business. Uh, my bills every month were about $8,000 a month. Um, I had tens of thousands of people underneath my team counting on me to continue in network marketing. But I knew that this was the answer to the dream that I had 18 years before. And so now it's been more like 25 years because we've been working at this for the last seven years. Um, Now, I went and had a meditation and I literally asked the universe, I was like, God, tell me what to do. Um, Tell me what to do. And I repeated, you know, just peace, love, happiness, joy over in my mind for about 20 minutes and then just asked, what do I do? And the answer was so crystal clear. It was give everything you've got to creating champions for life. And, um, sorry, but, uh, that was like at the end of 2011. And, um, that's just the best thing that I ever did because, uh, you know, we didn't know how to write a book or get you the material. And I know I'm like recording the video for my car. Um, sorry, (laughs) our pages, like, might not be fancy, but I'm telling you, the content is life changing. Like families' lives are changing all over the world because parents are learning to ask questions and to validate and to really be on their kid's side, not put them in a timeout and get down on their level and consciously explain, putting them back in the box, right? Uh, it gives an opportunity for you to actually hope that you can have peace and harmony and happiness and love and teenagers that aren't rebellious in your home, actually two-year-olds that are not rebellious either. That's all possible. So, um, quite a few epiphanies that I've had in creating champions for life. Um, number one is we need to be teaching our kids life skills. Number two, by being the mom who wants to give your kids a great life or the life you never had, and just giving them everything, we're literally stealing their motivation and their desire and then wondering why they're not getting up to go to school. And I know because I've been there and I lived it and I did it and I've been on both sides. I was was there in the chaos, totally lost, completely lost, Um, saw this fabulous, like my dream answer, realized I would have to give up my network marketing business and my seven bedroom house and everything that I'd worked for for all of those years to go into no man's land. And then, you know, there was another wall, of course, because we had no resources and didn't know how to build a business. But I tell you what, we aren't going anywhere. We're here forever. Um, We are both committed to helping you um, change things for you and your family, help your kids go from ADHD and ODD to learning the missing life skills that remove the symptoms right? And I can't get into all of that right now. But for those of you that are following and are watching, I wanted you to know why you would follow us and why you should listen to me. And the path that brought me here to you right now, presenting um, Creating Champions for Life. So we motivate our kids by validating their goal. I would love for you to have your nose pierced, right? I would love for you to have that. Um, That's called a goal, right? And then you create an environment that empowers them. And whether it be, we'll talk about that again, when you're 16, you're not saying absolutely not over my dead body. That's not who I want you to be. Make sense. All right. My name is Bonnie Leota. We are creating champions for life. Um, after the last seven years and doing a massive amount of research, I, I had to find out how did we get here? How do we get to 54% of the kids being diagnosed with ADHD? How do we get to uh, the majority of our children now being medicated for something, whether it be anxiety or depression or ODD or autism or whatever it is? Um, How did we get here? And so uh, I put together the crystal clear path so that you can see and really have hope and know and believe that anyone, if I could do it, 
you can do it. And um, I just give that away for free on my website, learntospeakkid.com. And we'd love to have you. Uh, I, I do plan on going live every day moving forward. I'm sorry I don't have my schedule figured out yet to tell you the time. So you can schedule it in and join me live and get your questions answered. But I can say, if you want to talk to me or if you have any questions to ask me, um, you can post it under this video or you can always send me an email. I'd love to hear your story Bonnie at creatingchampionsforlife.com. Thank you so much for being here, for listening to my story, and we'll see you tomorrow live. Bye.